the experience Michelin Primal C3, Safety 3. We want to present you now the base of the creation of this uh, new tire, Michelin Primal C3, all the reasons why, the market trends, and the product performance, of course. So uh, today uh, we launch this uh, new tire on the Romanian and Bulgarian market. Uh, this tire is uh, already available in European replacement market since February 2003. So you will discover uh, today the outstanding performance of uh, this uh, new tire, Michelin Primal C3, which uh, offer us a balance of performance, but you will discover more during the presentation. And we have here uh, Alina Ica, our marketing director for uh, Michelin Romania and Balkans. Almost uh, all of you know already Alina. And as a very special guest, we have uh, Mr. Dominic Emon, who is the vice president of uh, scientific and technical communication for Michelin Group Worldwide. So let's uh, let's start uh, with our consumers and with our uh, with their expectation to deliver the balance of performance in these new tires Michelin Primacy uh, 3. Michelin has deployed an inno innovative uh, design uh, process who integrated a deep understanding of the road accident. Why we are talking about the road accident and about the safety because. This is the main concern and uh, the main uh, expectation of our consumers. Uh, we did a study in uh, 2010 in uh, five uh, important uh, European uh, markets and uh, uh, the main conclusion was that the consumers, their main expectation is related on the safety. But we will see that not only about the safety. Our consumers are more and more demanding, are more and more sophisticated, and uh, we see also this for uh, our Romanian and Bulgarian market. For this, they are seeking constantly safety, information, and reassurance. Let's see what one of our consumers uh, are uh, telling uh, follow this uh, survey. Our consumer is looking for proof and practical uh, information. He trusts in the top brand. The consumer is expecting, as I saw, uh, as I uh, said, the safety, but the safety in all circumstances, not only the safety on the dry uh, road or only on the wet road or on the uh, course. And uh, one of uh, our consumers is, uh, is telling, I feel less safe when I'm driving around cars on a wet road that I need to brake. But they are not seeking only the safety when uh, we talk about the, the tire. There are another benefit that consumers are very, very concerned. So, first of all, the safety, but after that, they are ready to pay also the price if they have additional advantages, as the longevity of the tires and also the fuel saving. When we talk about safety in all circumstances, why we are saying that is that, of course, you know that there is a new labeling system for the tire which is going to be set up very soon which will take into account one feature of safety, only one feature of safety, which is wet braking 80 to 20 kilometers an hour on a given surface. But just, that's just a little part of the story. And with respect to Michelin, we, the way we approach that is to say, we have to have an in-depth understanding of what safety is. And to do that, we, we have developed partnership for more than 10 years now with many different very important entities that are developing in-depth knowledge about safety. I could mention the Global Safety Partnership, which is part of the United Nations and which is a program, worldwide program, to have better understanding about safety. 
I could talk also about Buffo in Germany. Very, very serious studies are done on several tens of thousands of accidents in order to have an in-depth understanding what were the conditions, what, what, what happened exactly. And from that, by working with them on that, we are able to set up what are the key points that we have to keep in our mind when, when we will design a new tie. And to give you some, some idea about that, let's look at something. The first thing you have to know, okay, first <coughs> axis of analysis, what is the environment? Okay, the environment for accident can be, of course, urban environment, or can be non-urban environment. And the accident which are in urban environment are not the same as the ones that are non-urban environment. Second axis, weather condition. So today we were happy during our trip. We had only a dry condition, except that if we had arrived a little bit later, we, we would, have, would have experienced also wet conditions. So dry road, wet road, and different weather, different conditions, different temperature also. And also one important thing with respect to when you do the analysis, in-depth analysis of accidents, you look at what are the kind of traffic conditions that you have. Is it a single vehicle? Is it vehicle to vehicle? Vulnerable user. Because I don't know if you know the global figure worldwide. Today, in 2012, there will be more than one million people being killed on the road all over the world. And if we continue with the trend, with the amount of new cars that are arriving each day on our road in the world, in 2030 it's going to be two million, so we have to do something about that, this. And, and of course, especially vulnerable user is a very key point in emerging countries because the infrastructure have not been developed really to cope properly with that. And that's why the young kids or even the pedestrian that are on the road and, and that's a key point that has to be taken. And you know, and most of the time those accidents are not very high speed accidents. Because when we have safety in our mind, we are always thinking about high speed stuff and so on. And if, if you look at the facts, what are the facts? They are not telling us that. And so let's look at some of the facts. And before looking at some of the facts, let's restructure the way it will have an impact on the tie. And because when we, we talk about the grip of the tie, the wet grip, the dry grip of the tie, we, we are concerned about either longitudinal, okay, in the direction of the tie, which is braking or acceleration, okay, that's longitudinal, or we can look at transversal stuff when we take curves. And you see, when you look at accident, so you have those type of typology of accident, and of course we have to think about what is the kind of grip that will be taken into account when you have to develop a tie to make sure that the tie will be safe under all those circumstances here. And we can summarize in a very simple table some figures that I'm sure you will be surprised with. If we globally summarize the figures, you see dry, 44% of all accidents are on dry condition in urban environment. 26% of all accidents are on dry condition with non-urban environment. And only 16% are on the wet urban and 40%. And, I, and, and you, I know that most of the people, when they are concerned with safety, they all only talk about wet grip, because wet grip is the... Okay, why is, why is that? It's probably because that's where you are more close to the limit of the time. With, because when we drive on the road, the level of acceleration that we have is not tremendous, ex except some of the pilots that are in the room that know how to experience that very high lateral G's in the curve. But for normal people like you and me, the story is slightly different. But you see, here, what this figure really is showing us is the following. 70% altogether, because if 
you add the 44 and the 26, 70% of the accident are on dry road. And 60% are in cities, which means not at very high speed. <coughs> so the conclusion for that, is, for us, is that when we will design a tie, we really have to keep that in our mind because we have to think about those are our key priorities. Develop a tie that has capability to break on the drive and to break on drive at low speed. Other figures that you may be surprised with also, you know, altogether 75% are on straight road, not on curve. 25%, of course, take because if you have 75 on straight road, you have 25% on curve. And 99% accident on wet road occur with very little water. Because I know that most of the time people have lots of concern about hydro planning. Hydro planning is the key thing, everything is about hydro planning. But when you look at the facts, when you look at the real statistics in terms of accidents, Hydro planning is a very, very low situation. Because I, to, to really have a hydro planning situation where you lose totally the control of the vehicle is, is really something that is not happening uh, very often. And you see it's 1%, 1% of the accident only on wet water. We, and you remember that accident on the wet where only 30% of the total accident. So, which means that hydro planning is not the key thing, okay? So, the key thing that we have to keep as a summary, dry road is important. Dry performance, dry braking is important. Dry in urban condition is important, okay? And we have designed Primatis 3 taking that into account. Okay, so that's our new Primatis 3. So, I was telling you that the only way escape from design conflicts is really innovation. So, what are the, the key points of what we have introduced in this time? The first point is the new tread compound. And the new tread compound has been developed with new components that really allow the tie to be at the same time at a very good level in terms of weight, but also keeping the fuel, fuel efficiency at a very good level. And, and keeping also the longevity at a good level. So that's the new tread compound. One of the key features of that tread pattern is what we call is the block auto, auto self-blocking sides. And you can see that after, if you want, the, because you can zoom on the tie itself here. You can see that the goal here is to say, if you put cut in the tie, then the blocks are more flexible and that's not what we want because we want really the block to be still rigid to make sure that the rubber will be in contact with the ground and by being in contact with the ground the rubber will touch the ground and will deliver the grip and so that is why by putting some things that help the block against each other to be strong then we have the benefit of the sides with, which allow to get the water out but keeping the rigidity to make sure that the handling on the grip will be fantastic. The positioning of the Primacy is really here, which means that it's for high performance premium touring car, and that's really the goal, and that is why you will not see small sizes for the Primacy 3. You will see sizes that will stop at 16 inch, 17 inch, you have seen also on the Audi A6, the 18 inch today. So that's really the battlefield of the Mishnah Primary 3. We will talk now about uh, the market concern this new Michelin Primacy 3. As Dominic uh, said uh, already, uh, here we are talking about 16, 17 and 18 inches market, which is the most dynamic market also at the European level and uh, we will see uh, in uh, Romania and Bulgaria. And what we can see at the European market, 16, 17 inches market is a growing market starting with 2000, 
2009-2013-2017, this market will grow with about 25%. It's important to see also that our uh, estimations for 2017 are that at the European level, the 16-inch market is mostly the same as the 15, and we know all that the far size in 15 is 195, 65, 16. We expect the, the same tendency for Bulgarian market, and we can see also an increasing trend for 16 and 17 inches, which are our main market for Michelin Primacy Tree. Michelin are of course, uh, it's already done, you know, because uh, there are some components of the time that are operating between each other at nano level. And that is why we are already working with a nano composite. And you have also the plastifier, which helps put all that together, that either oil or resin, and this time have resin. And you have also some small chemical stuff. But when you mix all that together, you develop bonds and links at nano level. And so we are already working on that. And we are also continuing to work on that to, to have a better, because what you are talking about is very important. Because the key about the property of the tie, of the composite, is to be able to mix all that two together the best way. It's exactly like when you make a cake, you know, you want the cake to be very well done. And my elastomer in your cake is the flour, my reinforcing filler in the tie is your sugar in your cake. My plastifier in the time is the, the oil or the butter or the eggs that you're putting in your cake. And my uh, chemical components is the spices that you put in your cake for the cake to be, have a better taste. But you know that if I give you the same ingredients that I have and you mix all that to produce a cake, all cakes are going to be different. So there is a know-how which is very important. And this know-how is how to mix all that together. And this is as important as choosing the right components. Most of the time people say, okay, if you have the right components, you will have the right time. It's not true. It's like the cake. You may have the right flour, the right sugar, you may have the right eggs, the, the right thing in the right quantity. But if you don't mix them properly in the right order, etc., your cake is not going to be the one you expected to have. And it's exactly the same with the time. Okay, okay. Avec de gând sau deja Michelin folosește ideea de neul colorat de masă? Do you intend to use the color colors in the producing mass? Okay, so we, we, we have done that more than 10 years ago. In 1988, for the Football World Cup, we, we had developed two times. One time which has the color of France, and one time which has the color of Brazil. Okay? And we have sold those times. We have also done uh, another experience where people on the website, it was in 1999, people on the website were choosing the colors for the trend, making the association of the color they wanted, and we were shipping the tie to them. What those studies have shown you uh, is that, in fact, the market for that is very, very small. People are not really ready to do that. And I always remember in my mind the discussion that I've had with Sergio Pinafarina. I suppose you know Sergio Pinafarina. And Sergio Pinafarina was telling me, you know, ties should always be black, and you know why? Because the, the road is black. And the tie makes the credibility of the, the grip, the motivation.
electricity of the car. And by having this continuity between the vehicle and the road, the time help us put in the mind of the people that the vehicle has the right motricity. And on top of that, if you look at the, at the vehicle from the side, you have the tie and you have the, how you call that, the, the part of the, where the tie is underneath. And this part is always dark. And he was telling me, having a color thing is not good because I yeah, need a continuity. That's correct. And if you look now at the car from the side, you will completely realize that, that really having this continuity of a black element with the under and the part of the, the body of the car which is also dark is a very good continuity. And I said that okay, this guy is <laughs> knows something about design, probably we should trust him. Okay. <laughs> so we got va aduce clientului, cumpărătorului de pneuri, anumite facilități fiscale sau de orice fel din partea autorităților. Absolutely not. No, there is a regulation which has been set up in Europe and noise. This regulation is just saying the tie have to be below a given limit. If they are not below that limit, they are not you allowed. Sell. You cannot sell them. And then if they are over that limit, so there will be one wave or two waves, the one which will do two waves will mean they are 3 dB below the limit, okay, which is after the noise, you remember that 3 yes, dB yes, 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 is yes. half the noise, okay? So there are three of the noise be below the limit, and they will have two waves. If, uh, if they have one wave, the more silent one, they will be 6 dB below the limit, which is one force, four times less noise than what is the limit noise which has been defined. But there will be no fiscal thing uh -huh. and so on. Same for the fuel economy. For the fuel economy, there will be no fiscal incentive. It's like what has been done for the fridge, you know, for the fridge or other appliance, okay. the lamps and so on. It's, it's just education. Education of the consumer. And the education of the consumer make, will make the consumer say, maybe I should be more careful about choosing my tie and choosing a tie that delivers more performance. The, uh, there is one thing that I want you to know about this new labeling system is that for wet grip and for fuel economy, the D letter will be empty, which means that you will have tires which are either A, B, C or B, F, G, but no tie will be D. And they have chosen to do that because from a psychological point of view, with all the experience that the regulator have with other appliance where we have introduced the labeling system, they have realized that people have the tendency to be in the middle, to say, okay, okay, I can buy the D, okay, I can buy the D, okay. Now, what they want is for them really to choose. Either they go on the good side, or they stay on the, on the other side. And you know, choosing between a C and a D, because the D will not be available. Most of the time, they are, oh no, I'm not going to go for a D, okay? I will stay with the D, which means that you put the people there. And that's what okay. they've decided to do. Okay. Can you tell me, Michelin has a program of recycling of envelopes, in which the buyer or user of envelopes, Michelin, can come to them to the un serviciu sau autorizat Michelin și în schimbul lor să primească unele avantaje, fie un preț mai mic la cumpărare, fie un avantaj de alge. Do you know the program at all like level of recycling for recycling your tires? So those if I'm coming to a Michelin service dealer and get back the used tires to receive some benefits, I don't know, on a smaller price or uh, so, it's not the way it is done, because, you know, that taking value about the time when the time is worn out uh, has a cost. 
And there are some countries who have actually already introduced when you buy the tile the cost of that. And on your invoice, you have something that you add. But you may have that for electrical appliances yes, in your country yes, already. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, when you buy one, yes. you, you have a Echo, couple of euro Echo tax. Echo tax. Yes. So this exists for tile in some countries, which means that in order to organize collecting the tile and, and all that, it has a cost. So that is why the consumer has to, has to pay for that. And, and that is why we're not giving the money back because the global cost of that uh, is more than the value that we can extract. Now, what we can do with tie when they are worn out? The, the, the principal use of a tie is not to value the, the material, but, but to value the energy. The typical passenger car tie, if you burn it in the cement factory, and you know the cement factory are energy, uh, <laughs> they need a lot and lots of, they need a lot of energy, and, and, and the burn tie, instead of burning oil, because it's better to burn something which is oil, which has been transformed in a tie, has been a first tie in a tie, and then we will produce energy. And typically, the passenger car tie average one is equivalent to 40 liter of oil in terms of energy content, which is a significant amount yes. of energy content. So that's the first use of uh, today in the world that's the first use of tie after the life. And the second use is to value the material. And here the ties are cut into pieces and they are used to produce different things, mainly sports, sports ground, okay? And, and, and they are used also to do some, some new road, and incorporate at, with certain percentage to introduce, to do some new road, especially in area where silence is the key priority. And with all tie which has been put into pieces, it's possible to develop uh, asphalt and roads, yes, which are very, very, very silent. Yes, okay, very good technology. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you.